According to a prehistoric Slavic myth, our world is created in the year 5.0 APC, and year 7000 will be the apocalypse. By that saying, it will be the year 1492, when Christopher Columbus took his voyage. It was indeed a moment that changed everything. As Mayan myth predicts another apocalypse in 2012, we're actually inspired by that the human species might be reached another turning point just as 1492. Looking at our planet that is increasingly civilized yet crowded, what would happen in the next key moment? Let us compare our Earth to this apple, and humans are just like the microorganism on it. As they have settled on all continents, they will gradually expand into the spaces between them until they have taken up the whole globe. So what does that mean? Simple it can be essential. The next frontier we're going to are the oceans. How is this process going to take place? I would like to share with you a piece of thought from Jeremy Rifkin, a leading economist in thinking of global trends. According to Rifkin, great economic revolutions occur in history when energy revolutions converge with communication revolutions. It's not difficult to list such moments in history that we already experienced. The moment when hunting means language, the moment when agriculture means the writing systems, and the moment when the telephone means petroleum. We have already witnessed an extremely powerful communication revolution in the last decades, PC and the Internet. It transformed the way information flows from a centralized and top-down approach to a flat and distributed way. Does that mean that the structure of our society is also moving in a direction that's distributed and libertarian? Inspired by that, I propose that the ocean revolution is going to take place through the three phases analogous to the information revolution, and I'll show them to you right now. We're going to answer the one simple but key question that's going to really unleash the potential of a breakthrough. This question is what next? We are going to see, so what? What are we doing there? 110 years ago, many people were trying to design the airplane. But when 99% of them thought about how to get a machine flying, the Wright brothers were thinking about another thing, how to land the machine after lifting off. This what next question turned out to be a keystone in the invention of the airplane. In the same way, we need to start on something as a first step to build our industry that will disrupt the status quo and will act as an engine which boosts us forward and leads us to more possibilities. It needs to be a major industry, not something just for the rich. This reminds me of the mainframe computer in the early computer history. We need a mainframe computer for the ocean. The way most people dream about the ocean city is not going to work. It's like talking about Facebook when the computer has not been invented. It's cool, but how would you get there? So, what is our mainframe computer? It's agriculture, the production of algae. It's an emerging industry, but I'll just tell you three things about it. The first thing is about its potential. Like I mentioned in the previous article, revolution equals social elements plus tech breakthrough. The prime social element we're facing is the deadly combination of peak oil and climate change. However, we all know that the oil is formed by Asian algae. Therefore, it makes sense to grow this energy source before we spend all the deficits left by our ancestors. As biofuel candidate, algae is fantastic. It grows really fast and contains 60% of business higher than any other biofuel sources. It does not require freshwater irrigation, so it's sustainable. It provides work carbon dioxide. At last, contrary to cornfield, algae does not for the regular agriculture for food production at all. The second thing is about its current situation. The algae fuel industry is not doing well enough. All of the major current cultivation systems have problems of their own. The efficient barrel reactor method has excessive high cost and therefore is not scalable. The waste rate pump system, which is the most popular method, requires large packs of land. It was reported that the land area the size of Portugal is needed to supply the European market. It would be unrealistic to find a land area of this size, let alone using for agriculture. The third thing is about why the matters does. My idea is about the agriculture and the ocean, which is a perfect combination of the two industries. On one hand, as it utilizes the vast area in the ocean, the challenge of space and scalability will be completely resolved. On the other hand, agriculture is not a utopian vision. It's a real industry that will create a valuable profit. My design borrows the basic idea of the current race system, but it is more efficient and scalable. 
The basic green unit in the system is a hexagon module, the equivalent of farmland on the sea. The unit is made out of light, non erosive materials that will float on the sea, roughly at this stage, with memories on the top, forming a greenhouse like environment for algae growth. Sea water is a convenient medium for algae growth, but this does not mean that we do not control the environment. Control the entrance of water, filter it when needed, and adjust its temperature and pH to bring optimal growing conditions and prevent contamination. Inside the unit, the algae is stirred by a wind power paddle to remain floating and touch sunlight, similar to how the Dutch windmills work. CO2 and other nutrients needed are pumped into the system for better growth. The module is attached to a central sea standing platform, which functions as a central base to support modules, collect materials, and briefly process them. Again, this idea comes from how civilizations has always been doing. In case of bad weather or harvesting, the module can be rolled up to avoid waves. The algae are also dried in this way. After the algae is dried, this device, which works in the same fashion as working cleaner does, will collect them and after briefly processing, sends the biomass out for further refining. The system is ultra scalable. Each platform works with five modules and they all piece up perfectly. On and on, we will expand and turn the vast ocean into farmlands from which we get energy and food. Agriculture kickstarted the ocean industry. Gradually, our ocean platform will expand and evolve to customize and personalize. Its function will diversify to serve enterprise as well as individual customers. Here's one of our personal ocean modules. I'm calling it the Apple II of the ocean. It has hardware and software just as many computer does. The hardware is a part of the system that provides technological infrastructure that makes various functions possible. Here we have a motherboard, on the top of which a disk drive kind of thing, enabling the platform to perform the functions of the software that's installed onto it. The platform has six expansion cards. Customers can add various functionalities to the system, like mariculture, agriculture, or water park. The power supply system connects with the outside world. The body is also equipped with a smart grid based energy management system to record and process data on energy consumption and acquisition. Smart grid technology will be fully utilized to create an intelligent, efficient, and decentralized energy unit. The software is a various function that module can perform with the support of different hardware. We will start with the enterprise customers. We will reinvent fishery, energy, and entertainment. Further than that, a new software industry will burgeon. In. Thousands of developers emerge. The personal ocean platform will expand its function from energy production to practically anything we can think of. The age of ocean changes the world. When I first learned about the idea of sea steading, Mr. Patrick Freshman's vision of a libertarian government and community made an impact on me. I strongly believe in what he says, because revolution in communication and energy will change our consciousness. However, I don't think the ocean community will be possible until when we have gone through the previous two stages. Before that, we need the industry and the hardware. This process takes time, as the United States was founded 284 years after the discovery of the New World.
that right now human beings facing a crisis on the earth in terms of limited living space, food and energy. However, this revolution will provide us with huge amount of resources like never before. We will gain at least 500 years of extra time on the earth until a future moment when we are both technically and socially ready that we could go one step further into the space. There is one more thing I forgot to tell you about. This is really important. Nothing that results from human progress is achieved with unanimous consent. And those who are enlightened before the others are condemned to pursue that light in spite of others.